Here's a chance to hear more of my interview with Danny Gleedhill, who we helped set up as Danny's hairdressing about two years ago. However, that's not all he's been doing recently. Last year, I started hairdressing for a lady who had dementia and the carers that she had just wasn't doing the job properly. So the family had asked me if I'd take on a bit of care work, like PA work. So I did. So I've been a PA <clears throat> like five hours a week and then hairdressed the rest. And then obviously with the lockdown, the other PA, she left. So I ended up doing 15 hours and then she was supposed to go into a care home before the lockdown. And obviously it wasn't safe for her with the COVID. So the family asked me if I would do full time. So me and my partner, we took on 40 hours um, with Janet, um, looking after her, going three times a day. So really, while everyone was at home in lockdown with nothing to do, me and Craig were still working. So it was still normal to me and Craig. Um, although we feel like we haven't had any time off because looking after somebody in this pandemic with dementia has been absolutely difficult emotionally and physically because she's, she couldn't understand why she couldn't go outside. She couldn't understand why me and Craig was wearing masks. So in the end, we had to take the mask off because we couldn't get her to do anything. And the fact that we was literally at home and at Janet's and we didn't go anywhere else. We didn't go shopping, we did it online. So we was quite safe, really. So it was, it was trying to balance all of that keeping her safe, keeping us safe, and making sure that we was doing our job properly, which when social services came down last month, they were really happy with her care. Like she'd put weight on, she was happy, she was clean. The house was clinical. She said that this is the cleanest house she's been at. She's been at 18 visits this week. And I was like, well, I have got OCD. I'm a bit of a clean freak anyway. <laughs> but yeah, while everyone else was on fairly, me and Craig were still working. So how was it for you when lockdown hit? Because this is the job you love. Friday the 19th of March was the hardest day I've ever done in my life to close my salon. Um, to build it up from nothing, to build my clients up from nothing, to get that confidence and that self-esteem. And to have to close was just heartbreaking. I mean, I think everybody who has their own business that they absolutely love, to close it due to sex and say, ah, your fault was just heartbreaking because I had that theory in my head, like, am I going to be able to go back into it? Am I, you know, because shops were selling out with hair dye and products. My clients were putting their own hair dye on and I thought, well, they're going to work out that that's going to be cheaper for them than to come see me, so are they going to come back? Um, I taught a few ladies how to buy there because their, their husbands and their kids needed their hairs doing. So then I thought, well, am I doing the right thing doing that? Are they going to come back? Are they going to get a knack for it? So it was, and then I thought, how am I going to go back to normal? You know, I don't know what's going to happen around the corner. We could be in lockdown till Christmas. So that would mean the job that I trained for years doing would potentially not be there anymore. So it was, it was, it was heartbreaking, Graham. Like, it, it took a lot out of me to do that. And have your clients come back? I can't believe it's their way. Yeah, they've all come back, which is really good. I had to bribe them with cake. <laughs> and I, obviously I can't make anybody a drink. Um, but I've kind of not found a loophole, but like you're allowed visitors from someone's household to your house. And because I work from home, if they're not in the salon and they're sat in the garden, I can make them a drink. So I can still have that with a client. In a salon, I wouldn't be able to. But because I work from home and it's a safe place for them, I can offer them a drink. And, and I have. Because at the end of the day, they're human beings. I'm a human being. We're friends before, you know, clients. So it was just a case of, you know, bring your own cup and I'll make you a cup of tea. And I remember you telling me that uh, it's not just about cutting people's hair. People like to come to you to have a good gossip. Yeah, what I found, like I've been open since Saturday, what I found, like these ladies were lonely. And I was lonely. Like it was groundhog day in my house. I only saw Craig or Janet. So I didn't have that human contact with anybody. And... Um, I was ringing my clients throughout the pandemic just to make sure they were okay, if they wanted a chat. 
if they just wanted to scream on the phone. And I think they waited to see me. And a few of my clients have tried to hug me because they've missed that, that chat with me to make them feel better. And trying to find that emotion to make them, because I've been emotionally drained from caring for someone like that who needs your attention 24-7. It's been trying to put a front on. But I think, I don't, I think things will go back to normal soon. But then there's always that possibility that there could be a second wave and you just don't know what's going to happen. Uh, you always done your tax returns on time, so you were able to present accounts to HMRC and that meant that you were able to receive government help. Well, I got an email from gov.com to say that I could be entitled to a self-employment scheme. Um, I put my details through. Um, I was entitled to it, and I got the money within six days. And that must have made a difference. Oh, yeah, it did. It did, because before lockdown, people were not coming in, and they was worried, so I was losing money. So I didn't have money to restock everything, because I wasn't making any money, because they were scared to come, and people were cancelling left, right, and centre. And it's not a great wage with Janet, you know? I, I didn't see the point in getting another job because the, eventually it was going to lock down, the country was going to lock down. So that made a massive difference because I was able to buy all of my stock, some brand new scissors, which I desperately needed, um, which I was going to get before the lockdown. Um, yeah, so now I'm ready for, for people to come. So would you say it's important to keep your tax affairs and your accounts in order? Yes. Just because, like, I have friends that I've got self, are self-employed and they make a lot more money than I do and they didn't get squiddly did because they don't do the books properly. It is so important to do your books properly because if you don't, like, it's proven this pandemic, people that haven't, I've got nothing. And that's on your behalf for being greedy. Now you've applied through the John Cracknell Youth Enterprise Bank for an emergency business grant because you need more space. Definitely. Um, I can't do more than one person at a time. Um, the guidelines are one person per client, but like I have families that have the hair done. I'm a family hairdresser, so I could have a lady and who's got two kids. I can't do that here. I'm having to go to their house to do that because I don't have the room and it needs to be five square metres per client and I don't have that in here. I don't have that facility to, to, to provide that service for clients so, because it's not safe. Even though they're in their own little bubble at home, when they come into my little bubble, it's completely different because I've got different clients. I've, I've had medics in here this week, nurses, doctors having their hair done and they've all been exposed to the COVID. So it's not just a case of, yeah, bring your kids, that's fine. They're not going to wear a mask. They're yeah. not going to be able to wear gloves or wash their hands off, put sanitizers on for children. So I have to go to their house. So if it was in the salon and it was bigger, then it would, wouldn't be a problem. So if things work out, what do you want to do with the money? I am going to extend my salon. I have a nice big garage in my garden, which I converted into a bar. Me and Craig don't throw any parties anymore, so... Aww. I know, it's sad, isn't it? I ain't got a life no more. So, the bar will be become a big salon with three stations, two basins, a lot more room. It's going to have a kitchen in there as well for star room. So, yeah, that's my plan, because hopefully I want to take on staff and I want to train girls up as well and get paid to do that, so that would mean going to university and getting my assessor's degree which will be a piece of cake, really, because I know what I'm doing. You've come a long way in two years, haven't you, Danny? I've come a long way, Graham, and I look a lot bigger as well. <laughs> <laughs> I'm blaming lockdown. I can't even blame lockdown. I was buying the day I was frightened to death I was going to get some of it. But, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I mean, I really struggled with confidence of going on my own. I've always struggled with confidence. I'm good at my craft, and I'm good at helping people but the confidence to do it on my own was terrifying. Um, you guys seem to just drill it into me that like, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. And with the help and support, and I did it and I've done it. 
And now I'm fully independent because I've left the salon that I was working at on a Saturday. So I'm not there no more. So I am literally on my own now. So it has to work. There's no relying on a, diff on a salon for a wage. It has to work now. And would you say that when you do start earning proper money, that that's when running your own business does start to change your life? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I never thought that I would be able to take a wage on my own, and I did. Before the lockdown, I was taking, I mean, yes, when you're self-employed, you don't take a lot of money, and I don't really go on hours. I just take £150 a week wage. Whatever's left over goes back into my business, back into my stock, back into anything that I need to pay for. So I made a wage doing it on my own it took a lot of hours and I never paid myself for hourly because if I was to do that <laughs> my business would be bankrupt so yeah I took a wage you can do it yes I've worked days that were my days off and I have done seven days a week and I have worked late on a night and I have worked early hours in the morning and I've juggled two jobs and a house and a career and another job so patience and hard work that's the only way you're gonna make it is patience hard work unless you've got a rich boyfriend <laughs> <Don't have appointment. laughs> but yeah so i wear this with um gloves and an apron um everyone i don't know what other salons are doing but i'm not charging my clients for ppe because that's just disgusting it's my responsibility as the hairdresser to apply, uh, you know, to, to give them away. Um, yes, it's cost effective. I haven't put my prices up because realistically, majority of people have been in lockdown and they've had no money. So, you know, I'm not greedy with money. My only issue is, is safety for others really. That's it. Yes, I'm not going to be making millions, but if I can, if I can help somebody out that's going through a lot at the minute, then I'm more than happy to. I know some salons are charging for PPE, and yeah. um, I'm not because it's not your responsibility. I have asked clients to bring their own towels because obviously mine can be contaminated. Yeah. Um, they, I've got disposable gowns, disposable masks. So, and if they want to bring, and a lot of people have brought their own masks, which I'm more than happy to. Um, obviously, I have a few clients like my, my one of my um, friends. She is asthmatic and she can't breathe with it on. So I've told her she doesn't have to wear it. I'm not mistrunchable. I am evil. You've got problems, that's fine. You don't want to wear it. I will be wearing mine to protect you. Look out for more from Take Two, coming soon.